alpha boomers read to me like a psychographic, time of life, changing purchasing decisions. And I know that the basic metric for purchasing time right now is age gender. But particularly in a time where we're data fusing purchasing information, where do you see it going? Could we finally get to something that gets away from this, you know, age-based metric sure. and get more into purchasing? No, that's a good question. Well, I mean, I think that question is a broader question than just alpha boomers. I mean, I, I believe that age and sex has always been a proxy for what an advertiser really wants, which is, you know, is there a change in either the consumption of my product or a change in the attitudes towards my product, depending upon what the product is. And, and you know, I mean, does it really matter that a Mercedes, you know, target is 50 plus? It really ought to be people who can afford to buy a Mercedes. And if you're 30 years old and you got the money to buy a Mercedes, I would think that that's really what you care about. You don't really care about how old somebody is. But because we have an imperfect kind of measurement system right now in the sense of really not being able to do that kind of buying on a consistent basis, you can do it sort of ad hoc, we all fall back on age and sex. I believe the industry going forward will, over time, move towards what I'll call targeted ratings, which are ratings that are basically, you know, linking up the viewership of programming with things like either psychographics or, you know, product purchases. And I know that that's that it, that's been done. I mean, it's been done, but it's always been done in a very bespoke kind of like you know customized basis it's not become kind of the currency and I believe that impressions will become less important and targeted kinds of ratings will become more important so when you get into the to the alpha boomers you're hundred percent right in other words part of it is a mindset part of it is it's 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 not just psychographics it's life stage I mean they are at a particular point in their lives so what's interesting though is they're all they're more complicated than you would think the usual suspect categories like travel and uh, you know upscale cars and uh, you know uh, I was going to say incontinence but I'm only kidding but you know I mean Let's some say of the, finance you know, f finance yes uh, you know you're not surprised that alpha boomers over index but they also over index on things like home repair they over index on uh, on furniture they over index on you know going out to to, to restaurants because they're at a specific point in life. I mean, if, if you don't have a family, you don't have to cook. Uh, if you're thinking about retiring or you bought a retirement home, you know, you're gonna furnish it. Uh, and so you're probably gonna be spending more money in those categories as a group now than you would have in the previous 20 years. I mean, when you begin your family, you know, in your 20s or early 30s, you have a lot of those purchases, then you've kind of decorated your house but now you're doing that all over again. The other thing is very interesting is that many, many, many alpha boomers are what is called the sandwich generation, where they are, they're not raising their kids anymore, but they are supporting them, but at the same time, they're supporting elderly parents. And what that means is, is that their product category uh, spread is much wider because they're buying products, not just for themselves and where they are, but they're buying products that are appropriate for elderly parents and they're still supporting their kids in terms of you know lots of kinds of purchases so that's another reason that makes them a very unique and different kind of group because most groups are more focused because where they are in life is pretty well determined that they're not that broad but an alpha boomer by dealing with elderly parents and by dealing with kids is just broader in terms of the categories that they have to go out and purchase one of the myths of you can get boomers or you know, 55 plus, 50 to 6, 55 to 64, anywhere. It seems to imply from your research that's not necessarily true. The Nielsen numbers may some, say something else, but what would you say to an advertiser who says that? Well, I think that if you, you know, it, it may well be that in terms of gross tonnage, you know, they, they, they are all over the place and you can get them and, you know, do a regular media buy. I think that as time goes on, you risk losing them because again, don't take them for granted. They do, I mean, their interest in cultural content skews much younger. In other words, it, it's sort of like, you know, how kids always want to be older than their chronological age. Well, alpha boomers really, you know, I mean, they're, they're baby boomers. I mean, they basically look younger. And so you just can't assume that, you know, the usual suspect kinds of media buy will continue to attract them. They're going to be all over the place. And if you're not following them to some of the cable channels that are kind of esoteric, you know, you, you, you potentially are going to miss them. And going forward, that's going to get even, you know, even, even, even worse. So, um, you know, I, th I think that's one thing. And the other is what I said earlier. It's about 
thinking about this group as a, as, a, as a very important and distinctive cohort and really trying to understand them in every way. And I don't presume to understand them totally. It's just that, like one of my frustrations is I asked Nielsen two years ago, they would just include in their major reports an alpha boomer break. So we have 18 to 24, we have you know 18 to 49. Why not have a 55 to 64? I believe that if you put that in front of media buyers and planners and you know other folks who look at these numbers on a daily basis, they will begin to get a feel for what this group is because it's so much about understanding the group and then figuring out how to approach them. So again, you know you may get them now by default, but if you continue to just think about it that way, I think that in a few years you're definitely going to lose out. So what are the next steps? Well, again, a lot of this is just trying to bring out the information to folks, I mean, and to answer questions and to keep it on people's minds. I had a really interesting experience uh, back in November when I was invited to come up to uh, Toronto where there's a guy named Moses Zanemer who has a company uh, which is basically designed to appeal to alpha boomers. It's a media company. It's a very, very hip company. In other words, they put out a magazine called uh, Zoomer, which is their brand. And uh, this does not look like your father's, you know, sort of retirement magazine. It's, it, it looks kind of like a Vanity Fair. I mean, uh, the cover that I saw that, you know, Diane Keaton was on. I mean, you know, now again, I mean, it's for an audience, but, 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 but alpha boomers don't want to be told they're senior citizens, don't want to be told they're old. And at the same time, marketers need to understand the value that they have. So what I'm trying to do is pull them all together. And again, if this is if this was just an NBC Universal issue, I would understand why people you know really wouldn't care about it. It affects every media company that has any kind of you know sort of baby boomer audience. It may not affect some that are you know sort of an MTV. That's understandable. I mean you know they they, they just don't they have other issues that they have to worry about in terms of their their target audience but I can't conceive of any you know media company or agency or client that really you know for the most part wouldn't want to you know basically understand this um, audience in more detail so you know what we're basically saying is come to us we'll talk to you about it um, I'd love to partner up with uh, Moses who's up in Canada doing the same thing I went up there to talk to his agencies and you know he's willing to come down and talk to ours you know we're going to try to do some things with the uh, ARF and some of the other you know uh, industry groups but again this is a very very significant issue Every seven seconds, somebody becomes 55, comes out of the demographic. We just got to kind of figure out a way to, to, to deal with it.